I've got the need for speed. On a previous video, we went through the ins and outs of the new Hyundai Santa Cruz, their latest adventure vehicle. Make sure to click the link in the description if you haven't watched that video because we go through the dimensions, the cargo capacity, the utility of it, all the features and benefits. So yeah, make sure to watch that if you haven't already. But today, it's all about taking this Santa Cruz on the road and maybe even a little off the road and we're going to actually put a trailer on it and tow as well. Let's get started. Here's a quick recap in case you missed part one. The Santa Cruz from Hyundai is their latest adventure vehicle. Uh, in part one, we determined the verdict, it is not a truck. It is a compact SUV with the utility of an open bed, which is so handy for so many applications. And today we are gonna talk about the drive of this. So in Canada, I mentioned as well, we only get three trim levels in Canada, so they've simplified things a little bit. In the US, you get different trim levels, more trim levels, and more options. In Canada, all Santa Cruz's come standard with all-wheel drive and also come with the more powerful 2.5 liter turbocharged four-cylinder. And that puts out 281 horsepower from the little four-cylinder, but because of the turbos, you get 311 pound-feet of torque. You put that all together, you have a great, great package, especially for towing. We will tow in a little bit with it, uh, but towing capacity of this is 5,000 pounds. That is much more than the Hyundai Tucson for sure. If you do find yourself towing on, on occasion, maybe a small travel trailer, maybe a boat or utility trailer, uh, you definitely wanna look into the Santa Cruz over the Tucson for sure. In the US, you can get front wheel drive and the naturally aspirated four cylinder as well, but that also has a lesser uh, tow rating than this 2.5T all wheel drive. So I mentioned as well, our trim levels are a little bit different, even the names of them. This is the ultimate, this is the top trim level in Canada. In the US, this would be the limited all wheel drive. So power goes through an eight speed automatic, same as the naturally aspirated engine, except with the 2.5T, you get a dual clutch transmission. That is a very, very welcome thing. We are on some nice twisty roads here. If we want to change our drive, we have normal we have sport and then we have smart if we go to sport our display turns all red let's just slow down a little bit and see how the transmission reacts in sport mode gearing down gear down a, a little bit quicker uh, so from a stop here we do have a little bit of cargo in there from a stop here we go oh it kicks really nice when it shifts there's 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour for our friends down south here. You can, the mid range is incredible. So at 100 kilometers an hour, you can have a lot of mid range torque for passing, absolutely. It's incredible how nimble this handles. Now this suspension is a little bit different than the Tucson. Of course, the wheelbase is longer as well, but the suspension, um, it, it's a little bit stiffer, so it doesn't roll as easy as the Tucson. It's quite engaging to drive. Remember, this is not a sports car, yet it's not a pickup truck. It's much uh, better riding than uh, a body on frame truck, hands down. I love the pickup though. In case you're interested, we are in the Hockley Valley area in Ontario. I'm not from around here, but it's it's really beautiful. You go through all these tiny little little towns, it, uh, it feels like you're in a whole different country. County of Simcoe. There you go. We're in the County of Simcoe. And there's someone passing us. Obviously, they know where the cops are. I saw a ton of cops yesterday, so I'm gonna cool it. I'm surprised how much I like this vehicle. I actually, I like it a lot more than I was expecting. Um, it's not even that much of a specialty vehicle at all. It just feels like you're driving something like the Tucson, but you can throw all your stuff. I was gonna say garbage, but you know, all your dirty stuff where 
smelly stuff or gas cans and throw it in the back there, but you have no compromises. Uh, we are on a bumpy road right now. A lot of, lot of construction um, lines. You can hear it in the, in the wheel a little bit, but it's so quiet. This interior is extremely quiet. So good insulation, good acoustic glass, uh, very comfortable. You have all the creature comforts in here. We talked about it in the first video. You know, this the Ultimate gets not only leather, but leather heated and ventilated seats. Uh, you get standard heated seats and steering wheel on all trim levels in Canada. Uh, the rear seats have a little bit less room for leg room, but other than that, uh, tons of room there. And you get all the creature comforts. You get the larger 10.25 inch screen on this Ultimate. Standard is the eight inch Apple CarPlay play Android Auto comes standard. You have the 360 camera on here. Uh, you get the blind spot monitor. So when we turn the signal on, it actually shows in the display there. So all the highest tech things, lots of connectivity, yet you can use this outdoors, go put your dirt bike in, everything. It's I love it. I absolutely love it. If there was one thing on the wish list for me for this vehicle, it would be that we could get the other powertrains. Uh, some might not need the extra towing capacity and might opt for that naturally aspirated engine. Uh, some might actually want a manual transmission. That would be a very, 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 very low take rate though. So I can understand if they don't introduce that, but another power plant option or uh, their hybrid power plant options that are available on the Tucson. So the hybrid and the upcoming PHEV, that would be a nice welcome to this. And that is of course, if you don't need to tow because the total rating will be lower on those. So this is the best all around vehicle. And when I talked to Hyundai and I asked about uh, other hybrid options, they said it's not out of the cards for sure, but they just want to see and they kind of test the waters of how this one uh, is responded to. Time to try something a little bit different. I've got the need for speed. Actually opposite of that. We are going to go into our terrain mode go into mud. We have snow, mud, and sand. Put it into gear. Here we go. Now, remember, this is not a rock crawler, but we are going up a ski hill. It's a big pothole here. Oh, yeah, let's hammer it to the floor. You can, the traction's excellent. Really, really good. We're going side hill here. This is really extreme. Like, imagine if you're on a nice logging road that had some washboard, you'd have no problem with this independent rear suspension. Now we're going downhill. Now this is the hill descent kicking in. Now if you go over 40 kilometers an hour, the hill descent will still be in standby, but not completely active and it'll come on when you need it. If you go over 60 kilometers an hour, it disengages completely. So we've picked up our trailer on the back. We have three green machines, three Kawasaki dirt bikes and the trailer. Now this 2.5 turbo all wheel drive has a towing capacity of 5,000 pounds, which uh, that is definitely not 5,000 pounds. It's probably closer to maybe close, maybe 16 to 1800 pounds. Um, I can tell you this right now, it doesn't even feel like we have anything behind it. Uh, the torque on this 2.5T is very, very good in the mid-range. We're going up a hill right now. Um, yeah, it's, it's effortless. So I don't know what it'd be like with max capacity, but it can do 5,000 pounds. If you are in the US and you have the 2.5 naturally aspirated engine, that tow rating is 3,500 pounds. So just be aware of that. If you need something more, then go for the turbo engine. Let's check out the braking with this trailer. Okay, fairly hard brake. Absolute non-event. And from acceleration, that was to the floor and I could feel the front tire is actually finding traction, so it really pulls you out of the pocket really, really well. And this is uh, especially handy if, let's say you're pulling a boat, you're at a boat ramp, and you're on the incline that can be slippery because it's wet, and that's gonna be a big, big asset having that all-wheel drive. 
All right, I have a correction to make. On the previous Santa Cruz video that I did, when we did the whole walk around, I stated that the hard rear tunnel cover uh, is standard on all trims. That is true, but it's standard on all trims in Canada. In the US, it is an option on some of the lower trims. Now the bed in the back of a car is not a new concept. Remember the El Camino? And this is not much different than, let's say, the, the um, Honda Ridgeline. You might think this bed is too small for things, but you have to also think of the other side. It's the right size for getting things in and out of the vehicle. And that's one thing I noticed. I had my suitcase back there and it was flying around. And you know what? I can open that tailgate and reach all the way in and actually grab it still in a full-size uh, truck bed that would never happen and usually they're all much higher so it's definitely not as convenient this is a lot safer for carrying a lot of your goods whether it's sporting goods uh, picnic stuff shopping whatever I'm absolutely guilty of loading our SUV right to the gills we're going to the beach we're going camping and I got tables and tents and everything and it's loaded to the top and you know that it is really unsafe if something were to happen those things aren't totally secure and they will enter in the passenger compartment here at least you have all those kind of dangerous things they're actually away from the passengers and that's where they should be whether they're golf clubs scuba tanks fishing gear whatever you know what keep them all in the back it keeps the inside clean and it also keeps the inside safer Hyundai has a whole suite of advanced driving features and one of the ones uh, that I really like uh, is the lane keep assist with steering and the highway driving assistant on this and it just works so well. Now I'm going to start my stopwatch here. Okay, I'm on cruise control right now. I'm going to take my hands off the wheel. We'll see how long it'll let me drive hands free. Now this is not a uh, an autonomous system by any means it's, it's meant to aid you but it does really last a long time um, we are doing 104 kilometers an hour right now and the nice thing about the steering assist on this system is that it doesn't have to have the cruise control on you could activate that lane keep assist and just be regular driving and once in a while that is actually handy hey we've all done it before where we've used our knee to steer because you're opening a package of gum or something you know something like that and it's just nice to know that someone's got your back on this but uh, we are a nice open road right now I'm ready to take control uh, when it tells me to and we're at 110 kilometers an hour right now so this system also um, it, it varies the time depending on your speed and and the road so of course if the road conditions are you know not as good if you can't see the lines as well or if you have a lot of corners it's not going to uh, let you go as long as if you're going slower I bet you if I was going uh, under 100k maybe like 80k you're gonna get even a longer time now on the Genesis products we tested I think we got like two minutes and around 17 seconds out of it so let's see how this new Santa Cruz compares. We are at a minute 31. A minute 31. All right, I'm gonna speed it up right now just so you don't have to wait for all this downtime. We are at two minutes and it's still going. I have a feeling it's gonna, it's gonna kick off pretty soon though. Oh, keep hands on the steering wheel. There we go two minutes and 10 seconds. So pretty well standard uh, compared to the other Hyundai products, but it is a really, really good system. If you do a lot of highway driving, especially bumper to bumper stuff, uh, it uses, you know, it uses this, this radar and it uses the cameras and it, it just takes a lot of stress out of monotonous bumper to bumper traffic driving. extremely curious to know your thoughts on this new Santa Cruz from Hyundai leave a comment below I will read every single one of them if you have any questions about this leave a comment or question there I'll try to answer those questions but yeah do you like this Santa Cruz 
the styling, even if you don't like the styling, do you like the whole concept of, hey, taking the, the SUV or the compact SUV and just having another option of having a bed in it? And if you do like it, um, what other things would you like to see? in you know even aftermarket uh things you know i think they're coming out with like a like a rooftop tent for it uh the one that we showed you is actually a box uh tent but i think a rooftop would be good too um yeah a lot of options out there